Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Um, so there is a lot going on right now in the acting world. This color purple movie is definitely opening up a can of worms and bringing on a lot of social media drama. So if you guys remember, it was about a week and a half ago, Taraji was on stage crying at two different events about pay inequality and lack of pay. She was also talking about how, you know, Hollywood didn't deem her as having like a Hollywood look. Um, so a lot of her interviews that she's done as of late have gone viral. I want y'all to watch these interviews really quick here. I'm really getting tired of black women having the same story. It's breaking my heart. Like 20 plus in the game, it breaks my heart. It's like every time you achieve something really incredible, it's almost like the industry looks at it as a fluke. Like, ah, oh, that was like some one-time thing. So you fall back to the bottom and you got to negotiating that fight tooth and nail to get what you made the last time when where's my raise i haven't had, i haven't seen a raise in my income since proud mary and almost had to walk away from color purple what? yes ma'am who said what <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> yes ma'am because you know what if i don't take a stand how am I making it easy for Fantasia and Danielle and Hallie and, and, and Felicia? Then what, why, why am I doing this? If it's all just for me, what the, why are you here? We are to service each other. God is very clever. He put us on this earth and he made us all look different. He made it complicated. We need to figure it out. I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing my sister say the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yeah. Well, have to. Mm -hmm. The math ain't mathing. I was told uh, oftentimes I'm not Hollywood pretty. I was told, yes ma'am, and I don't know what that means, but I was walking around for some years thinking I was ugly. Because mm. I don't know how to process that. What does that mean, Hollywood pretty? What I'm hearing is that you're saying I'm ugly. Yeah. And I'm too ghetto. And you know, and I'm like, well, I know where I come from. Those mm. girls need to see themselves. So that's why I came out here knuckles ready. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. All right, so you guys just saw those clips. So then afterwards, this young girl went viral. She's, I guess, a body language expert <laughs> while sipping on lemonade. But um, her video went viral. Basically, she was assessing the body language at the Color Purple premiere between Taraji P. Henson and Oprah Winfrey. So I want y'all to go ahead and check this out. We're going to go over your body language. Let's look at Oprah. You see how she looked at Taraji and quickly looks away. And now look at Taraji, look at her legs, she locks it away from Oprah, looking up, fluttering her eyes, trying to hold back tears. But she's trying to be professional, so she leads into Oprah, Oprah pulls away. Fake laugh, we all know that's fake, that's fine. But they're trying to release it, that negative energy outside their bodies. Oprah is all closed up, she's not even trying to open up, and was closing in on Oprah, Oprah pulls out, trying to find an escape goes right behind Gano Brooks. I look at Taraji Faze. She's just like not having it. And notice how Oprah is suddenly now open up with her arms and look at Fantasia's face. Look at Taraji as if we're almost to the ending of this. Don't worry. Something definitely happened here. And now look at how Oprah has her arms and her hand. You know Oprah don't touch people like that. And then you see how loud they're singing. Try all right, so you guys just saw that video. This other interview came out two days ago where Taraji is opening up about unfair treatment during the color purple concerning the rental cars. So this is what Taraji says. She says, production made the cast dry themselves to set in rental cars. They gave us rental cars and I was like, I can't drive myself 
to set in Atlanta. This is an insurance liability. It's dangerous. Now they're robbing people. What do I look like taking myself to work by myself in a rental car? So I was like, can I get a driver or security to take me? I'm not asking for the moon. They're like, well, if we do it for you, we got to do it for everybody. We'll do it for everybody. It's stuff like that, stuff I shouldn't have to fight for. I was on the set of Empire fighting for trailers that weren't infested with bugs. So that is what Taraji had to say. So, of course, that went viral. And once again, people were giving Oprah the side eye because they feel like, you know what, Oprah, you're a billionaire. You're a part of, you know, remaking this movie. You know, why are these women not driven to sets? If these were white actresses, they would have, you know, armed security guards making sure they got to and from safely. So... At this point, Oprah feels like people keep trying to pin her against Taraji. So she finally decided to address both situations at the Golden Globes. One interview she did with Kevin Frazier and the other one she did with her best friend, Gail King. So I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. This movie was important because it created a space and roles for a group of black women. Yes, and I would just like to say about this whole Taraji, you know, I I heard I was trending yesterday. Uh, because people are saying that I was not supporting Taraji. Taraji will tell you herself that I've been the greatest champion of this film, championing not only the behind the scenes production, but also everything that everybody needed. So whenever I heard that there was something that people needed, I'm not in charge of the budget because that's Warner Brothers. You know, Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. the way the studio system works. And we as producers, everybody gets their salary. That's negotiated by your team. And so whenever I heard there was an issue or there was a problem, there was a problem with the cars or there was a problem with the food, I would step in and do whatever I could to make it right. And I believe that she would even vouch for that and say that it's true. I think she would vouch for that. I can vouch for that because I've seen you and your work and behind the scenes, how you step in and you have put your own money up. I'm all for everybody being the greatest and rising to meet the rising of their own life. And so, I mean, all this stuff about there's a, you know, there's there was something online about uh, us being separated at the top of the Empire State Building. On that particular day, we were so cold. So I don't know what kind of body language people were talking about. I, I was like just trying to stay warm, and that was the fourth thing we had done. And so I, I, I you know, there, there, there's no validity to there being a thing between Taraji and I. Yeah, I think that people want to find something, but Taraji was talking about Hollywood in general and yeah. how it, the landscape for black actresses. But once again, Color Purple is a space and a place where black actresses thrive. Ah, uh, yes. And where we're all thriving because of it. I mean, I think from the very beginning, one of the things that Fantasia said so beautifully is that this would be a healing for people who saw it. And did you not feel that when you saw it? I... It touched me. It was beautiful. I watched it by myself. No, no, no. no. I had to. I needed. It was good to watch it by myself because I got a little teary eyed. And um, it was. It was beautiful. I thought that you couldn't improve on a movie, but they did add little nuances to it that made it special. And the women's performances, including Danielle and Taraji, it was incredible. Oh my gosh, just all incredible. But before you go, three people have stopped me today, Oprah, and said, what is the deal with Oprah and Taraji? What do you want to share with the class? Oprah and, no, I'm addressing that to Oprah. Oh, because I saw your face. No, because people think. Because I know that it's not a deal. It's not a deal. But people think you're mad, she's mad. I know that that's not true. first of all, the thing that is so upsetting to me is that somebody went on and and something went viral where they're analyzing us on on top of the the Empire State. We were cold. Oprah said you were cold. We were cold. It was cold. Yeah, there's a whole thing we had done that day. That was the fourth thing we had done that day. First of all, I just want to say that. From the beginning, when I got the first phone call that cars were, they were being asked to rent cars because they were in the middle of rehearsal. Well, I asked for my own car because I like to drive myself. I'm a Southern woman. But when you heard. I heard that Taraji was upset because she'd been asked to do a rental car. I personally called Toby Emmerich, who was at the time the head of Warner Brothers and say, and he said, well, that means we have to do cars for everybody. Then I said, then we do cars for everybody. And if it's necessary, I will pay for the cars myself. He goes, well, we don't want you to do that. So, you know, from that was one thing. Trailers were another thing. Food was another thing. And everything got handled. And everything, yeah, everything got handled. I just so I don't even know. know why, no I don't even know. Between. You know what? It's so disturbing to me. Why is my name even in this conversation? Because you're Oprah Winfrey. Can I say something? Yeah. Why is my name in this conversation? Because 
Please. I have just been the champion for everybody. everybody. Yeah. I want to just say one thing. I'm a mother of young kids. Social media has become a thing. Social media has become a thing where they will take something that's not even true and run it and run it and run it. Yeah. And sometimes it's almost like you guys, some of the interviews you're posting happened long ago or mm -hmm. it wasn't that we'll and they will take things. Yes. No. So at the end of the day, when we first said that this movie was going to be a healing thing at CinemaCom, yes. I knew without a shot of a doubt mm -hmm. that people would try to break that down. Mm -hmm. Anything that has healing a part of it, they will do so. So we all have to haters. overlook all of that other stuff yeah. and keep shining bright because this movie, The Color Purple, is healing the land, yes. baby. So but, no matter what, I just want to say, yes. it's nonsense. It, there is but, no uh, thing. There, there is isn't anything no. because what there I know is, is no. you've been a champion of been Taraji a champion and everybody. And everybody. Yes. And that's the only point and that I... And trying to make sure that everybody got exactly what they needed. First of all, I am a producer. Scott is a producer. Yes. Yes. We are not the studio. <laughs> We that are not part. the studio, okay? But I tell you what, the this is my first time getting a Golden Globe, and I do not want to miss that carpet, y'all. <laughs> yeah, over the mountain. All right, so you guys just saw what Oprah Winfrey had to say about the situation. And you guys also heard what Fantasia had to say as well, where Fantasia was kind of playing it off and saying, hey, I'm a regular person. I have no problem driving myself to set and things like that. Well, now, um, Messy TMZ ended up catching up with Vivica Fox, and they decided to ask Vivica Fox about the Taraji P. Henson pay inequality statement. And they, and they wanted to know what Vivica Fox felt about pay inequality towards black women in Hollywood. And a lot of people were not happy with Vivica's answer. I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. Do you feel like um, now is the perfect time to have the conversation that Taraji kind of continued or for Monique, you know, you're an actress, you've been out there. Is this the perfect time to kind of talk about that in the right platform? You know, darling, to each his own. Do you know what I mean? I'm very happy, very blessed. And uh, to each his own. I didn't have that experience, so, you know, but to uh, get your peace out is important. I totally understand that. And uh, I love my girls for looking out for each other. But uh, I'm good. All right, so you guys just saw what Vivica Fox had to say, and a lot of people were pissed off. They felt like, oh, you know, this father, she didn't have a black woman's back. Oh, all you do is Tubi movies. People were really dragging her, which I just thought was silly. But now, to add insult to injury, um, Gabrielle Union um, was caught liking shady tweets about Vivica Fox. So somebody wrote this tweet, and Gabrielle Union ended up liking it. So... TMZ writes, Vivica Fox says she hasn't experienced Taraji P. Henson work woes. And then somebody else wrote, she hasn't experienced Taraji's success either. Next. And Gabrielle Union liked that. Once again, proving that she's still a shady mean girl, no matter how much she tries to act like she's not. Now, this is my thing. I don't think Vivica Fox did anything wrong. At the end of the day, this is about self-preservation. And if Vivica Fox did not have the same experiences to Raji, Monique, and others, that is her business. I don't think that she has to make up a fake experience or act like, you know, she has so much in common with what Taraji's going through if that's not the truth. And my thing is, once again, when Monique was out here speaking up, when Monique was saying the same thing five years ago, where was, you know, Taraji? Where was Vivica? Where was Gabrielle Union? I get it that maybe some people don't like Monique or she's not palatable or her delivery can sometimes be harsh. I get that. But when this was but when this discussion was going on 5 years ago, all of these folks were quiet, but it's funny that now that Taraji's bringing it up, people expect people to rally around Taraji and basically share her same experience. And I also don't like this whole because you like Taraji or because, you know, you don't like Vivica or, you know, or vice versa. Let's stop knocking these women. All of these women have put in work. Hollywood is not an easy place. It's not an easy place to not only book work, but to continuously book work. And I don't like the fact that people are trying to dismiss Vivica as old and, you know, dismissing her to a Tubi actress. Like, are y'all dumb in my Remy Ma voice? Vivica Fox was that girl when I was growing up. So let's start there. She's been in plenty of movies from Independence Day to Kill Bill Volume 1, Batman and Robin. She's done a lot of work out here in the industry. Um, you know, so I don't understand why everybody's dismissing her to Tubi movies. Just like I would never take anything away from Gabrielle Union. She's done a lot of work too. You know, she was in Think Like a Man, Daddy's Little Girls, Bad Boy, Deliver Us from Eva, and many, many more movies. 
So it's kind of sad that Gabby would even like something like that and act like Vivica hasn't put in any work or like she's washed up when, you know, Gabby, you're struggling for the same roles too. You're struggling to stay relevant in the acting world as well. You know, people can tweet what they want to tweet, but that was definitely shady for Gabby to sit there and like that tweet as of Vivica's washed up and like she's never had any significant roles in Hollywood. She made good money off of Independence Day. She's been in a lot of big name movies. So I don't like that. You know, just like Taraji. Taraji has done a lot of work. You know, everything from Benjamin Button to Hidden Figures, which is one of my favorite movies with Taraji P. Henson in it. Hustle and Flow, Karate Kid, not to mention Empire. So they've all put in work as black women and as black actresses. So I just hate the fact that because Vivica is not saying what everybody wants to hear or is not showing all this undue support to Taraji, and I don't think she didn't show any support. She just said that that's not her experience, and that's okay. We all have different experiences in life. And again, it is some of it is self-preservation. Does she really want to be out here ruffling feathers when for her, she said she's good? Whatever she has negotiated, obviously, you know, it has panned out for her and she feels like she's good. So all we can do is take her word for it. For Taraji, she feels like she's putting in a lot of work and she's not good, you know? So that is Taraji's experience. But I just hate this whole, you know, everybody attacking Vivica. Like all of a sudden she's refusing to support other black women simply because she has a different experience. Now, as far as like the whole Oprah thing, I do think it's kind of crazy how this went from being a promo for the color purple, but it's totally spent into something else. It's not even about the color purple anymore. It's about pay inequality. It's about, you know, people not having a Hollywood look. It's about everything but this movie at this point, which is unfortunate. But um, I feel like Oprah needs to be more involved, especially if she wants the credit of being like an executive producer. Um, she needs to be more involved and she needs to make sure that these women are taken care of. But that's one thing I've always heard about not only Oprah, but Tyler Perry especially, is that they are very cheap when it comes to playing their staff, their actors, their crew. You know, they pinch pennies. And that's sad because the white studios already do that to black actors and actresses. So you would think that, you know, bringing on black production and black EPs and ADs and everything else and directors, you would think that that would somehow help soften the pay inequality blows, but it seems like it's not. So I think there needs to be a real discussion, you know, had, but again, it's still hard for me to feel all types of undue sympathy because this discussion was had five years ago, you know, via Monique and via Viola Davis and many other women who stepped up and spoke out as well. And it was dismissed. Why? Because at that time, you know, let's keep it real. Taraji was the it girl. She was Cookie Lions. Empire was doing great. They had the number one show. So sometimes when people are doing good, they don't always tend to, you know, lend an ear or a helping hand to those who may be struggling. And now that Taraji's kind of in that position, now everybody's feeling like, you know, Vivica Fox owes her something or should be extending a hand. And Vivica Fox is like, you know, that's my sister. I love her. You know, her story is her story, but that's not my experience. Vivica has the right to her experience. So that's just my personal opinion, but y'all feel free to drag me down below, child. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Don't forget to like the video. Feel free to share the video. And most importantly, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.